February 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 3 from the New Testament. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Icuria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan River, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight, every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be brought low, and the crooked will be made straight, and the rough ways will be made smooth, and all humanity will see the salvation of God. So John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore produce fruit that proves your repentance, and don't begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, For I tell you that God can raise up children for Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So the crowds were asking him, What then should we do? John answered them, The person who has two tunics must share with the person who has none, and the person who has food must do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He told them, Collect no more than you are required to. Then some soldiers also asked him, And as for us, what should we do? He told them, Take money from no one by violence or by false accusation, and be content with your pay. While the people were filled with anticipation, and they all wondered whether perhaps John could be the Christ, John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I am is coming, and I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clean out his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his storehouse, but the chaff he will burn up with inextinguishable fire. And in this way, with many other exhortations, John proclaimed good news to the people. But when John rebuked Herod, the tetrarch, because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil deeds that he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized. And while he was praying, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my one dear son, in you I take great delight. So Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about thirty years old. He was the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janani, the son of Joseph, the son of Mathathias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Maath, the son of Mathathias, the son of Simeon, the son of Josek, the son of Jodah, the son of Jonan, the son of Risa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kosam, the son of Elmedum, the son of Er, the son of Joshua, the son of Eleazar, the son of Joram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Menna, the son of Mattatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, 
the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Selah, the son of Nashon, the son of Amminadab, the son of Admin, the son of Arnai, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahar, the son of Serug, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Kenan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. God, there are, there are certain people that I'm excited to see when I get to heaven, besides you, of course. But there's also some people I'm really excited to just meet and hear more from them. John the Baptist is one of them. He was foretold as coming back in Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. And now we're starting to hear about him and hear about his ministry. Uh, but I, I love his uh, get off your butt and do something speech here to the people. Um, sometimes I think that pastors need to do a few more of those speeches. Uh, granted, there would be less people in church because who likes to be told that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, but uh, maybe the people who stay would be a little bit more determined and a little bit less deluded. <laughs> I don't know. Paul was the same way too. He gave a lot of those types of speeches. But I love this because we don't, I love how he's saying that this is an active relationship, that you chose us. We are the elect. We are your children. You chose us, but in choosing us, it needs to be an active relationship, meaning I then choose to live my life for you. I don't get to say, yeah, I said some magic prayer in church. I'm saved and now I can coast the rest of my life um, because of the new heart that you gave me. I automatically want to help people. I want to love other people. I want to forgive other people. I want to be a reflection of you. But it sure seems, especially in the American church of today, that that most people think that they can come to church, sing some songs, and be good to go for the rest of the week. Or what they're saying is for the rest of their lives. And gosh, if you, if you even just stop and read the Bible, there is nowhere in there that you ever said that. In fact, you keep saying exactly the opposite. You must give up everything. Do we not understand what everything is? You must follow me. You must do my ways, not the ways of the world. How powerful are words that John the Baptist says, even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees of us who think we're good to go because we call ourselves Christians and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. That is not the message that most people tell others about you. Most people will talk about saying a prayer, a magic prayer in church or raising their hand in church and saying you want them to come into your heart but it's not just that and we are doing a huge disservice to people if if we're telling people that in order to follow you in order to have eternal life with you that's all we have to do is raise our hand in a service and say yeah come into my heart we then are called to a completely different life a different way of living a different way of thinking a different different way of handling things I just had a conversation with somebody who's been in my life a year now, exactly a year as of yesterday. It is still causing him confusion 
and frustration and sadly pain that I do not react to him as the world reacts to him. He wants, because of things he's done and things he's not done, he wants me to hate him. He wants me to reject him. He wants me to punish him because of his guilt. I can't do that. God deals with him. God deals with his forgiveness. I've forgiven him. But I don't hate him. I don't see him the way the world sees him. I see him as a child of God, which he is. So, today, God, can we get past this being a tree? And I think of a tree as something solid and not moving almost obstinately not moving. Can we get past that image as Christians of somebody who once we're saved, we're good to go and we're in that same spot for the rest of our lives? And can you light that fire underneath of us and get us going and get us out of our comfort zones and get us away from the gods of this earth, whether that be TV or, or music or in playtime or internet or, or people? Can you teach us what real followers of your son really look like? Can we hear those words in hearing your word? Can they come and live in our heart? And can we honestly, as people who live in wealthy nations, can we truly give up all of these gods that are surrounding us and just follow you? I don't ever want to hear out of my mouth. I don't have to do anything because I am a child of God. I am good to go. The Bible says if I say these words, I get to go to heaven. In the Bible, it also says, not everyone who calls upon the name of my father will see eternity. Thank you, God, for amazing people like John the Baptist. For people out there who are willing to tell the truth and light those fires and make people feel uncomfortable and make them relook at their lives and the, and the settling that has happened in their life and the dilution of what you have called us to really do in this world. Show us today those things that we need to get straight so that we aren't that tree that is rooted in one place, thinking that we're good to go. That is not what you put us here on earth to do. God, I thank you for your son. I thank you for everything your son represents and everything he went through. So much of what I will never understand or be able to fill myself because he was your son. But I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. I thank you for my imperfectness and you making it okay to be that way. That my perfection is only through you. <laughs> Never through anything I do. Continue to make my past straight and clear and continue, God, to bless me with making me feel uncomfortable. And allow me to see what that means in my life. In your son's name I pray. Amen.